my gosh, we're back already. It's been minutes, minutes on my fake watch. Friends, welcome, welcome everyone to Bonus Craft Time with Stephanie Sign Wilson. I'm so excited to welcome my friend Stephanie Sign Wilson back to Met Opera Global Summer Camp. <laughs> it begun. That's right, Sophie and Elise. It begun. Woohoo! We're back. Thank you. I'm excited. Are you excited to go crafting? Friends, I'm going to describe myself for all of you because I want everyone to know what I look like, even if they have bad Wi-Fi or if they can't see or whatever else is going on. My name is Camp Counselor Dan, if you're joining us for the first time, and I hope you are. Um, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm a white male with silvery black hair. I've got a mustache, green eyes. I actually have two eyebrows, which I, I never talk about those two. I'm wearing a black Met Opera Voices Rise t-shirt. I'm in my room in New York City, and the wall behind me is white. And mostly because I just don't ever want to paint and then have to repaint when you move. It's a lot of work. Uh, directly behind me is a mirror. And right over there is a picture of an elephant. And I can't wait to see where you are camping from today. Friends, you know what? I am really excited about this session. Stephanie Sign Wilson and I have been friends for a while. And I know Stephanie to be kind of one of the zaniest, uh, most talented. Uh, yeah, I know. We love Stephanie, right, Aria? We do. Okay, let's get her in here. I, no more introductions. Let's just do the thing. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Camp Counselor Steph. Hi, guys. My name is Stephanie Sign Wilson, and I'm a clown. Ha, 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 ha. Phyllis, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not your time. I'm sorry, you guys. Phyllis the Fish is such a troublemaker. What are you doing? Phyllis. This, isn't your se this isn't your segment. I know, but I like to take over. All right, you're out of here. Okay. Oh, whatever. my gosh. Oh. I'm sorry, you guys. Phyllis the Fish likes to pretend that, that, that she's me. Let's be oh. honest. <laughs> you know, and... I too sometimes like to pretend that I'm you. So <laughs> I, understand, <laughs> I understand the impulse. <laughs> oh, well, it's always good to have a little disguise and, and, and uh, play a little bit uh, of game. <laughs> you know, I have to say, you, someone said, it's a fish. <laughs> it's a fish. Thank you. Thank you, not, Sandy. Not a person. Uh, Steph, would you do me a favor and just briefly describe yourself and kind of your picture or background for us? Sure, sure. Hey. I'm a, a white female. Uh, I have two uh, curly haired buns, a la Princess Leia on either side of my head, wearing a little, oops, wrong side. <laughs> I don't know my left or my right, apparently. Um, I'm wearing a little tiny red top hat on my left uh, side of my head. Uh, I have a red, uh, black and white uh, top on with some fluffy ruffles on the, the sleeves mm -hmm. and a red and black uh, sparkly vest. Um, I have brown eyes and I have red lipstick on and I have a little cute little Marilyn Monroe mole on my right cheek. And then behind me is a brown and gray curtain and a cream colored uh, wall. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I'm so jealous of your wardrobe and your Marilyn Monroe mole. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> now, well. <laughs> I know you've got a spectacular lesson plan for today. I was telling the campers a little bit about it in the last session, and I'm really, really thrilled to see what you're cooking up today. Yeah, I'm excited to see too. I'm making it up as I go along. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that for a minute, but you no, always... No. You always make it look effortless, whatever oh, you do. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet, Camp Counselor Dan. Um, well, uh, hi, friends. We're going to talk a little bit about the Barber of Seville, right? This is the one we're working on this week, correct? The opera we're working on. Uh, it uses a lot of slapstick comedy, as I'm sure you already know, and has several moments of disguise and mistaken identities, all things that obviously clowns like to do. Um, and before we get started, Dan, I wanted to watch a, a clip from the Met Opera production. Do you think we can go ahead and show that clip? Absolutely. And friends, we're going to see uh, Lawrence Brownlee, uh, who we just met, along with, I believe, Christopher Maltman and Isabel Leonard in this clip. Check it out. This is Il Barbieri di Sevilla from the Metropolitan Opera. Sí, señor. 
Fun. It was so funny. It was so good. They were scheming and planning and plotting. I can't wait to watch this opera, which campers you can do in about two and a half hours. Don't forget, you can watch it right there from the Mets website, from the summer camp website. You can watch Rossini's Il Barbieri di Siviglia starting in uh, two and a half hours, two hours and 20 minutes until Friday. Get into that, right? That's exciting. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for sharing that clip. That was really awesome. Uh, it makes me think about, uh, we were talking a little bit about how there's a lot of disguise and scheming in uh, the Barber of Seville. And so I wanted to go ahead and do our first menti of the day. Ooh, I love that. I love a good menti. Let's, let's get our menti code for the day up here. The menti code for the day is 23, 62, 54, Five. Those are also my lottery ticket numbers. Oh my gosh. Did you did they come to you in a dream? I'm gonna play them too, so we'll have to split the amount. That's right. Let's do it. That's right, friends. It's menti time. Get in there. Let's see if people are in the menti. Waiting, waiting. All right. Let's see menti. All right, what do we got here? So we wanted to know what are some ways you can disguise yourself. So this is a word class. So whatever comes to mind, there's lots of different ways to do it, but what are some ways? Yes, costume, put a mustache on. That's one of my favorites. I know Dan likes it too. Uh, what else we got? Maybe, maybe, uh, can, I know. Go ahead, Dan. I was gonna say you could be a fish pretending to be a, a clown. <laughs> Oh, I saw prosthetics. That's so great. Wow. Oh, wearing different clothes. What else is in there? Sunglasses, uh, colored contacts. That's good. Fake oh, beard. A feather Act boa. Yep. Acting differently. That's a good one too. You can totally change how you how you perform, how your personality is. Um, what else? Oh, I'm having trouble reading some of these. Yeah, here I can um, see sunglasses, uh, fake beard, spider dance yeah. mustache. Dress up like a car, sure. <laughs> Dress up like a car, I like that. Uh, put on a hat, put on a wig, colored contacts. Use a different hair. voice. Ooh, I love that. Makeup is a big one, costume and mask. Oh, somebody put a little purse emoji, I love that. <laughs> little purse. <laughs> um, That's cute. Oh gosh, I know. Um, these are all so great. And they also give me lots of ideas for different characters that I might want to create to sort of disguise myself or disguise whatever character I'm playing. Definitely. Um, these are awesome. Uh, I really wanted to talk a lot about the mask though, the one that, that one came up pretty prominently here. And um, the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because masks are not only a great way to disguise, but they've been used for centuries in the theater. Uh, one of the earliest forms of mask use comes from uh, something called Commedia dell'arte. Commedia dell'arte is a form of theater that began in the 16th century in Italy. 
Commedia was characterized by the use of masks and their stock or archetype characters. These characters and their masks became so recognizable that storytelling could be easily understood in, in any language. So that was sort of the point is that you had these characters that matter who the actor was that was playing it. When they put that mask on and they donned those characteristics, you knew immediately who they were in that world. Um, and each comedian, uh -huh. yeah, does that make sense, Dan? Yeah, because they're probably traveling from country to country and they don't, they, everyone speaks a different language and it's like you want to, you want to put on a show. Exactly, exactly. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, definitely a way to open up your audiences and uh, to have a more diverse audience. Um, or also if sound was an issue, uh, you know, cause it's not like we had microphones back in the early 16th century. Um, you could see from the physicality and the masks, uh, what that character, what, who they were and what they were trying to accomplish. So each comedic character is either a master or a servant. And each can be recognized by certain distinctions. So uh, the, the facial characteristics of the mask, so the chin, right? well, the chin isn't necessarily part of the mask, but you could have a prominent chin, or the cheeks, or the nose, or the ears, or the size of the eyes. All of those features played into who the character was. Um, and then they also had a postural choice, like maybe they had an arched back, or they stood a certain way. Uh, maybe they had high shoulders. So and we're gonna get into more of these different characters and what each one uh, performed, both as their facial characteristic and their posture choice. And then also their voice, was their voice high or low? It, it, all different choices, maybe they were young, maybe they were old in their voice, right? And then the last part is their emotional drive. So what is the emotion that gets them from place to place? And this is actually really important in both opera and, and any kind of theater, right? What's the purpose or what's the thing that's driving this character? Are they greedy? Are they in love? Are they, is it, is it their ego? Are they pompous? Do they need to be heard? So those are all really important things. So what I wanted to do now is just take a look at a few of the most famous, famous Commedia dell'arte characters. And I have a little presentation. Can we pull that up, Dan? Let's take a look. And I'm going to vanish and let you do what you do. Have a great time, Steph. Oh, I'll see thanks, you. Dan. I'll see you later on the flip side. All right. <laughs> OK. All right. So um, with our Commedia characters, we have, we have a few different ones. Um, the first one we have is Pantalone. Uh, let's see, did we pull that one up? Oh, there he is. Um, Pantalone is, uh, is he's a, one of the, the masters. Uh, he tends to walk with his hips forward while his knees are bent and turned out. And his hands and feet move quickly, but his body is very stiff and his head is constantly moving, right? When he gets emotional, his breathing becomes almost asthmatic and panting. I, I'm guessing pa the panting is where they get Pantalone from. Um, his mask has a hooked nose. You can see that right there, the black mask he's wearing and very prominent eyebrows. And his costume is usually red. Uh, he is very, very greedy and very sinister. He typically is seen carrying a coin purse um, because money is so important to him. And, uh, and sometimes often he'll also be carrying a knife. You see that in the picture there, right? Uh, so, um, and then with the masks, you can see the mask only goes to about a halfway point so that we can see the face, right? The bottom part of the face. That was also really important in Commedia. All right, so that's Pantalone. I think we got a pretty good idea of who he is. So now we're gonna move on to the next slide. And that one is Il Dottore or the doctor. And the doctor is very rotund and he has a fondness for food and drink, but particularly chocolate. Now. I like chocolate, so I get that. Uh, he walks with his chest up and his knees are bent, but he has a bouncy movement taking very small steps. His mask is one of the only masks that's a one third mask. So it covers a little more of his lip. Unlike the other Commedia characters, they, they all pretty much have a half mask. Um, his costume is usually all black. Um, he's very pompous and extremely rich. Um, he tends to be uh, either friendly or in cahoots with Pantalone, and he pretends to be an expert on everything, but he's not. 
I'm sure we've all met people like that in life. So Il Datore, um, you kind of get a good idea who, of who he is. His nose is a little smaller and his mask tends to also uh, cover the mouth a little bit. So our next uh, uh, Comedia character is Columbina. Columbina is one of the female characters. There aren't um, typically very, there's only a couple of female characters, although any gender could portray any of these characters. Uh, in Italian, Columbina means little dove, and she's a female comedic servant who is usually portrayed as being in love with Arlequino, which we'll get into uh, Arlequino in a little bit. She's typically one of the smartest people on stage. She usually wears a cap and an apron, but she doesn't typically wear a mask. And in theater, there's a character uh, called the soubrette. Um, Columbina is where the, the soubrette in modern day theater comes from. Uh, so you can see there, she doesn't have a mask. Um, she's very smart um, and very funny and uh, probably knows more than anybody else on stage. That's right, any gender can play any of the comedia characters. That's important. All right, so moving right along, we're gonna go to the next slide. And uh, I like I like Arlequino a lot. I think Arlequino is really fun. He is a comic servant. Uh, he usually wears a, ch or it could be a she, like I said, uh, usually wears a checkered costume like a, like a jester, uh, is very lighthearted, very physically agile and a mischievous character. He's a nimble acrobat and often can be found cartwheeling or somersaulting instead of just walking. Um, his mask is red and black with small eyes, hollow cheeks and a very snub nose. Um, it tends to be, like I said, very nimble, um, like a gesture, very acrobatic. Um, and again, also tends to fall in love with Columbina. They tend to be the servants that are in love. All right, so that's our Arlecchino. Um, the next one we have is the captain or Il Capitano. Il Capitano is a bragger and a swaggerer who talks at length about made up conquests to impress others, but often only ends up impressing himself. All right, he's extremely opportunistic and greedy and his costume is a military type uniform. He carries an unusually large sword and it's it tends to be so heavy that it's too heavy for him to even draw it. Like if he tries to draw it, he it's, it's nearly impossible. And then of course, that's pretty hilarious. He stands in a high posture, taking up as much space as possible with a straight back and chest pushed forward. His mask has a long nose and often also includes a mustache and very prominent eyebrow lines. And you can see that mustache in the picture there. Um, yes, the characters appear in the Carnival of Venice. That's right, Danielle. Daniel, uh, thank you so much. All right, so uh, that's the Il Capitano or the captain. And then the last character I wanted to talk about is the Zani. Um, Zani is one of my personal favorites. Uh, Zani is an astute servant and trickster. He's very ignorant and has no self-awareness. Thinking doesn't come very easily to Zani. Uh, he's known for his ability to scheme and manipulate. And he's often thought of as a, what I would call a stupid genius, right? He's sort of uh, not really smart, but kind of finds his way into these sort of schemes and makes these things happen. His costume consists, consists of white baggy clothing that you can see in the photo here. And his mask has large eyes, a furrowed brow and a very long nose. So now it's said for the Zani that the longer the nose on the Zani, the more stupid he is, okay? So that tells the audience right away, okay, this character is gonna be very much a foil, right? It's gonna be very funny. He's not gonna be very smart. Um, <laughs> I feel like as I go through the day, I am each of these characters. And yes, I would totally agree with that. I feel often that I'm probably more of a Zani in life than anything else. And that's okay, right? Uh, his walk, the Zani walks with an arched back and one leg is extended with a pointed toe, which you can also see in this picture, while the supportive leg is at a bent knee, right? And he, so he switches his feet a lot, right? He'll be bent knee and, and pointed and switch a lot. And his arms are usually bent and sort of half lifted, right? Almost, I would say there's almost like a bird-like quality to Zani. 
So there you have it. These are your, um, I, these are not all of the comedic characters. These are the uh, uh, some of the most uh, prominent ones um, and some of my favorite, uh, but there, these are the, the stock com Commedia dell'arte characters. And these characters, they're often referred to as an archetype, right? And these archetypes are still used in contemporary storytelling in opera, theaters, movie, TV, etc. So now that you're familiar with some of these commedia characters, I would like to play a game using our menti. So let's go ahead and return to our Mentimeter. And we're gonna play a game where we can guess which contemporary character goes with which commedia character. So pop in your menti, it's code 23625545, my lottery tickets. Oh, here we go. So. Which comedia character do you think best represents Bugs Bunny? So think about what you know about Bugs Bunny. Is it Pantalone, Arlecchino, or Colombina? Oh, interesting. We have some Colombina. We have Pantalone, a little bit there, okay. Oh, and I think we have a bunch of Arlecchino, but it looks like our, um, our, our graph matches our background, so we can't actually see, but if you look at the numbers, there's a four for Pantalone and a seven for Arlecchino and a three for Columbina. Great, keep keep sending those answers in. What do you think? And there is no wrong answer, right? It's what do you think it is? Great, we have 11 for Arlecchino, okay. Six for Pantalone, four for Columbina. Very nice, good. And you know, what's interesting is Arlecchino and Colombina have some similarities on stage, right? They're both very smart. Um, Arlecchino is very agile, very acrobatic, and um, also a bit of a schemer. Uh, let's see. Interesting. So I think personally that Arlecchino is the closest to Bugs Bunny because of the physical agileness and because he's a little bit schemy. Um, Pantalone is close, but Pantalone tends to be very greedy about money, right? And I think Bugs Bunny is a, a little bit different than that, but that doesn't mean that Pantalone couldn't be Bugs Bunny. Um, I just think that our, Bugs Bunny tends to be more um, like cartwheely, spinny, uh, and stands a little more upright, but you're right. That could be Pantalone as well, right? There could be a little bit of greediness. Good job, you guys. I really like all your answers. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next one. See which character we have here. Oh, so I don't know if you watched The Simpsons or not, but this is Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. And Mr. Burns is, uh, are, he's he's carrying some money in his hand and he's got kind of a hooked nose and he looks a little bit, um, a little bit angry. He's kind of got a side eye. Uh, and I think uh, that should give you a little bit of information about Mr. Burns in case you've never seen The Simpsons. So which comedic character best represents Mr. Burns? Is it Arlecchino, El Capitan, or Pantalone? Ooh, we've got a lot of Pantalones, yeah. Uh, I think Mr. Burns is pretty greedy is what I understand about him from watching The Simpsons. Um, I think I can also see a little El Capitan in there because he is a little bit, he's pompous and a know-it-all um, and, and a little in this that similar vein. Um, but I, I think a lot of you are doing the pantalone, which I think is spot on. Arlecchino, maybe he's very agile and a little bit jestery. I could see that too. Um, but what we're looking for here, I think, is the pantalone. Did everybody get their answers in? We got 20 for pantalone. You guys are awesome. This is amazing. Um, yeah, and look at all that. That's gonna be me once I win the lottery, right? Okay, good job, you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next question. Which Commedia character best represents Jack Sparrow? Is it El Capitan, is it Pantalone, or is it Il Dottore? Again, there's not really a wrong answer here. There's just, what do you think is closest, yeah? And in case you've lost your code, it's 23625245. And for those of you at home, there is a picture of Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean on the screen here. Uh, and uh, Jack Sparrow is wearing a red bandana. He's got his hair in dreadlocks and he's kind of giving a side eye. Oh goodness, we have 17 for El Capitan, zero for Pantalone and three for Il Dottore, very nice. Yeah, he's very, very, he knows it all. He's he's not wearing military clothes, but it's the the um, pirate equivalent of a military outfit. 
Um, he definitely carries that big sword. He's kind of blundering, but thinks he knows it all. Uh, and I think that definitely seems like Jack Sparrow to me. Good job, you guys, you're nailing this. All right, so I think we've got pretty much everybody answering that one. Are we ready to move on to our next one? So which comedia character do you think best represents Hermione Granger? Ooh, Harry Potter fans, what do you think? El Capitan, Zani, or Columbina? Remember, she's one of the smartest people, yeah? And and uh, and there, she's got the love interest, um, very much uh, into scheming to help move the plot along. Right, yeah, we've got a lot of Columbinas. And of course she's female. Uh, again, not that the gender matters necessarily, um, but I do think that we're headed in the right direction here with Columbina as Hermione Granger, right? Very recognizable stock character here. Although you're right, she could be El Capitan. She's very in charge, right? Awesome, you guys, these are great answers. And I think we have, do we have one more or is that the last one? Oh, that was the last one. Good job, everybody. That was really wonderful. Okay, so I thought that since masks are such a big part of Comedia, I thought it would be fun for us to make a Comedia mask together as part of our crafting segment. So today, drum roll, brrr, we're gonna be making a version of the Zani mask. Although if that doesn't float your vote, feel free to get as creative as you want with your mask and create your own character. You can do whatever you wanna do with this. You do you, right? Ah, oh, you're welcome, Global Summer Camp. I aim to please. <laughs> awesome, so here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need three paper plates. And if you don't have paper plates, that's okay. You can use some paper. Um, if you have some paper that's a little bit on the heavier side, that would be great. Um, you don't want it to be like heavy, heavy cardstock, but somewhere that that's a little bit heavier than regular paper. Um, we're gonna have a, a small ruler. Um, you'll need a small cup for measuring the eyes. Although you can go without a cup, it doesn't matter. We can, we can, um, you know, you can just eyeball, <laughs> eyeball it. <laughs> See what I did? Eyeball. Uh, you'll want a pencil or a pen for marking, uh, scotch tape or glue. Scotch tape would be better, but, and then some scissors. Make sure you have permission from a grown up or some supervision because that's really important. A rubber band or some string or elastic will, will do, will do well there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I have my, you know me, I like to be fancy. I have my craft cam. Can we pop craft cam in here? We can do like a little side of me and a little side of the, there we go. Look at that. My Look, I got two things going at once. There's my hand, there's my hand. So fancy. All right, so I've got these three paper plates here. What I'm first gonna do is I wanna cut the plate in, in half, right? Just down the middle. So. You know, if you want to measure, you can, but you don't have to. Um, and I'm going to take my time while I do this, but you know, sometimes I tend to go a little fast. So just keep in mind that if this feels like it's going too fast, that this is, is recorded. Look at that. I have an extra one. This is being recorded and you can watch it later on YouTube. So you can go back and play a little catch up if you need to. So I'm going to cut it straight down the middle like so. Ooh. And remember, you can't really make any mistakes with this. It's just, you know, you can always start over. Or we can turn it into our own thing, right? It doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going to save this piece for later because I like to recycle what I can. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cup I was talking about. I have this uh, cup here. And I'm going to put it on my plate as close to the edge as I can. And I want to make it kind of at like a halfway point here, I'm going to take my trusty pencil or pen or whatever, and I'm going to draw an outline of a circle. Let's see what I got here. Oh, you got to push down really hard because you don't want that cup to um, move around. And now I have a nice little circle there. Yeah, you guys see that? Beautiful. I love a two camera setup. It makes me feel like I'm on like uh HGTV or something. I've got my own crafting show. I've got my own Met Opera crafting show, you guys. All right, so we're gonna do that on the same side. And again, it doesn't have to be like perfectly even, but 
I'm going to try to get it all the way over to the edge here. And I want to try to make them match a little bit. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my second eye like so. So now I have these two eyes. Great. Now the next thing we're going to do, this is relatively easy. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and cut out following these uh, half circles, right? Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just using this as a guideline, just like so, right? See that? So we've got one. Do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and do that other side. Am I going slow enough for you guys? I know sometimes I go a little bit fast. Right on. Can you see? Steph needs a show. Ah. Yeah, let's do it. What if I had like my own craft show, you guys? I like to do a lot of sewing too. I don't know if you know that. I make a lot of my own costumes and things. I didn't make anything I'm wearing today, but I do. And so I like to sew. It would be fun to do some crafting and sewing. All right, so my previous eyeballs are now here. Good, see? So now we've got the start of something, right? Beautiful. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this paper plate here, the other half, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a piece of it. Let's see, I, I think about an inch. I use my knuckle because I have a knuckle that's about an inch long here. And we're gonna cut about an inch. So I'm gonna cut all the way across here. So a piece of that's gonna come off. So I'm gonna eyeball it, but if you wanna measure it, you can. Again, it's not that deep. So I'm gonna go right about here and I'm gonna cut all the way across like so. Yeah, see that? And we have extra plates, like that's why I, I was like, let's have three plates. That way just in case we make a mistake that feels like we can't fix it, you can always start again. Great. So we've got this piece. We're gonna hold on to that. We're not gonna need it now. We're gonna use it later. Beautiful. So now we've got these two pieces of paper, these two other paper plates. We're gonna put them together like so. And this is where you're gonna need your, your ruler. I'm gonna measure out, um, I guess maybe about one, two, three, four and a half inches. And I'm gonna measure it kind of at an angle. So I'm gonna go right about here and down. And then I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of make like a triangle that doesn't meet at the top here. Can you see that? So I'm gonna kind of angle it about the same but I'm gonna make it wider at the bottom and skinnier at the top. So let's see, did I do that right? We'll find out. <laughs> That's pretty good. So it kind of looks like, um, I don't know, almost like a triangle that doesn't have a, 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 isn't complete. And then at the top, if you want, I, I'm using my glass um, to kind of make a little bit of a curve here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I might just, cut into that a little bit, all right, like so. So now I'm gonna just cut this out with both pieces together, that way I don't have to measure it twice. So I'm gonna cut this out like so, I'm just gonna go right on down like to here, all the way up, and remember it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna cut around like so. Can you see okay? Sometimes the two camera setup is tricky. Okay, there we go. Yeah, nicely done. So it should look like this, but you have two of them. Yeah? All right, good job, you guys. Okay, so, oh, we're starting to make a thing. It's so exciting. Okay, so we're gonna make the nose. So these two pieces and this long strip are gonna be our three-dimensional nose. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this and fold it like so, but don't fold it all the way, right? You don't want it to be um, a point. You just want a little curve because what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this piece to this piece, yeah? So we're gonna go ahead and build this like it's a three-dimensional thing, right? So I'm just gonna go to the corners here. Hmm, this one's tricky. You might need a, 
You might need a third hand. Does anybody have a third hand? I don't. Sometimes I wish I did. Oh boy. Can you see that okay? There we go. Getting the first one on, that's the toughest part there. And then you've got the second piece here. And I may have made the nose a little big, but that's okay. We can always trim it down. We're gonna wrap it around. And then you go ahead and place that piece of scotch tape. Again, you could do this with some glue. I think it would be a little bit trickier. There we go, just like so. Amazing. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but it should be a little bit easier because we have kind of a base, a foundation now. Does that make sense? That's right, this is gonna be Zani's nose. Very good, you guys. All right, so now we're gonna tape this piece together like so. Oh my goodness, I can smell it now. <laughs> get it, get it, get it? Yeah, you got it. All right, whoops. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Working it, there we go, good. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. Do, 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 do. And you can always go back and reinforce it if you need to, right? You can always add like, oh, I feel like it needs a little more tape on this side, you know, because I want it to really hold. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. There we go. Beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this like so. I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to flip it this way because I want, I want it to be, see how it's curved a little bit? So I want the curve part to be more on my forehead because I feel like that goes more, my forehead is more of, of a curve versus this is more flat and this part sticks out. So go ahead and take the curved side and you're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna flip it up probably about an inch. Yeah, so I'm gonna flip it up by about an inch and I'm gonna fold it. Hi, Dan. Hi, Steph. Before we, we go further, can I just ask, can we go back and just show a little bit more of the nose construction again? Some of the campers were asking a few questions. Sure, sure. Let's, I can, do we, Do you want me to do it again? Sure. That might be fun. That might okay. be a good idea. Sure. Where help. did we get lost? I think it was in the connecting of the long strip to the two sort of semi-triangular pieces. Yeah, that part's a little tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no worries. So I have an extra plate here. Uh, so let me just grab an extra plate and cut it in half. because I want to make sure it's the right size. Thank you, Dan, for, for bringing that to my attention. All right. So I'm cutting this in half. So you should have this half piece here. And then I think what we did is we cut about an inch all the way up, right? Like so. Good. So this piece is gonna get folded. Here, let me get that out of the way. Like so, can you see that okay? It's gonna get folded like this. But remember, we don't want it to be like a too much of a point. We just want it to fold just enough like that. So it's kind of like a triangle. All right, so then we made, we can put that kind of to the side for now. We did, we used our little, um, uh, our little uh, ruler, gosh, I couldn't remember what the name of a ruler was. We use our little ruler here and we measured out about an, about one, two, three, four and a half to five inches. So we'll go here and we want it to kind of angle, right? So I want the part here to be skinnier and this part over here to be wider, right? So we're gonna do that, but not too much, right? Maybe maybe by about an inch and a half on the width there. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. So it should look kind of like a, like I said, like a skinny triangle that doesn't meet in the middle. Do you see that? Take your time with that. I know that can be a little bit confusing and a little bit tricky. Like I'm half in, half out, here we go. Um, okay, so from here, you can simply just connect this with by making it a curve, okay? And we're gonna cut, remember, we're gonna cut two of these out. Let me get a second one. So that we cut out two at the same time. That just makes our life a little bit easier. We don't have to measure twice. So I'm gonna cut from the bottom here. 
and I'm going to cut all, I'm going to keep that as part of it. I'm going to cut all the way up. Can you see that okay? Great. And then I'm going to curve this around. There we go. Nice. This one might be even longer than the other one, which as we all know, means Zani's not as smart. Ah, ha, ha. I always like it to play characters, I think, that are a little unsmart because I just think they're funny and fun and, and fu I just think they're funny. I like it. All right. So we've got these two pieces. Yeah, like so. And then we have our nose. Can you see that OK? So we're going to try to tape this piece to our. So then this piece becomes like this and these become the sides that's what we're looking for um it takes a little bit of practice um you what you could do if if you're having a hard time with this what you could do is put a piece of tape on on the um on one side of it like so and then add this piece here whoop i dropped it doesn't help if you drop it add this piece here and then just fold it right into place. Yeah. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So now I have one part done and now I've got to tape my other side. So I'm going to hold it down. Actually, I'm going to put this down while I grab a little bit of tape. I'm going to place a little bit of this tape on my finger. Keep dropping my nose. In what world do you get to say that? I've dropped my nose. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this down with my hand like so. And then I'm gonna take my tape and I'm just gonna place it over the top. And it's just to kind of get it into place. It's a little tricky to do, it's not easy. So don't, don't sweat it if you're having a little bit of a hard time. It was definitely a little bit tough for me as well. I'm gonna take another piece and just give it a little bit more reinforcement here. How are we doing? Are we doing okay, Dan? I just wanted to make sure we aren't totally behind and we haven't lost everybody. So now we're gonna do noise. Okay, great. Thank you, Kareet. Um, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but now that we have a base, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that tape and put it right here. So this part's already sticky. And then I'm just gonna throw this one on top like so and then i'm going to fold the tape over there you go so now we have it's almost like a little box right and i'm going to do my last piece is right here yeah again it doesn't have to be perfect and you can always you know give it a touch up or redo it later not a big deal you know um, and then we can play with the different so like sizing. So you see, I actually, you know, mine is sticking out a little bit. I can just trim it, you know, not a big deal. I can go like this, it's totally fine. I'm gonna trim it like so, amazing. Great, so we've got the start of our nose, right? Perfect, so where did I, I lost the face. I put it over here. Oh, here we go, so the face, like I said before, um, you want the, if you can, the curved side is I think better on your forehead. Oh, I'm so glad that you think this is so fun. Um, we're gonna flip this up by about an inch so that we have something to attach our nose with. Yeah, so do you see that? Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I might trim this down a little bit. It feels a little bit big for me. So I'm gonna trim mine down, but if yours seems okay, you don't have to do that. So I'm gonna trim it down just a little bit, but I'm gonna keep that little curve so it has something to hold on to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this piece to this piece right here, like so. Can you see that in the craft cam? So I'm gonna flip it like here, and then I'm gonna grab my tape. Oop, a little too much. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tape the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm, I'm taping this here. And then I'm going inside of my Zani nose. And then when I pull it down, it should attach like so. Yeah, awesome. Do you, see, do you guys see that? 
So now the only thing is when I put this on, I have this little piece right here that's kind of in the way. And I want my nose to fit inside the 3D nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim that piece down a little bit. Can you guys see that? So I'm gonna carefully, be careful here. You don't wanna catch any fingers. I'm gonna trim this piece down like so. And then if I put this on, it should cover my nose. Yeah, you see that? So once I start getting it together, there we go. Yeah, you guys are getting the idea, right? Perfect. Okay, so we're almost done. Believe it or not, we're getting there. All right, so the last few parts are, I think, my favorite. If you want, you can create, I this is my prototype, you can create little eyebrows. Do you see the eyebrows? Um, out of your spare parts, right? So we have this piece here. So you can just go ahead and tape that to your Zani mask like so on either side. I'm actually going to do my, my, I fold the tape once. I fold the tape again, and then I'm gonna place my eyebrow tape here. And then I'm just gonna stick it right onto my plate like so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I just, I think because the eyebrows are so important in the mask, in the Comedia masks, I just think it makes it have more of a personality come to life. And I just think it makes the mask look cooler. So again, I'm gonna tape my little tape. I kind of create like a fake double-sided tape and I'm gonna stick my eyebrow on here like so. And so now I have two eyebrows. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is, remember this leftover piece here? I'm just gonna cut a little bit out of it. Use your judgment. I'm just gonna cut um, around this the perimeter, but leaving some of the, the top of the plate like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the top just to give it a little more dimension. And you can do that a lot of different ways. If you want, you can do the, the fake double-sided tape thing um, to hold it in place for now. So I'll do that first. So I'm going to put some underneath and then stick it right on my mask. And then I'll do the same thing to the other side. How are we all doing? Are we good? Did I go too fast? It's always so hard to gauge because, you know, I can't see or hear you guys. But um, so in my mind, I think, oh, it's all going great. So I did that. If you wanted to reinforce it, you could throw some more tape on the back like I'm doing here. Just put a little piece here. And then another on the other side. And then pretty much we're done. The only thing we need to do is find a way to secure the mask to our face, right? So what I've been doing is kind of just putting a little bit of a, just using my scissors. This might, you might really need a grown up for this um, because I don't want anybody to poke themselves. I found that if I used a hole punch, it was too wide. So I just take my scissors again, please, you know, check with your grown ups on this. And I just kind of push a little hole through. You just want to be really careful because you could kind of hurt your, your fingers. And we, we want you to keep your fingers. We like your fingers. They're important. You can't craft without them. I'm just saying. All right. And then I'm going to try to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to try to make it match. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so that we have a way to hold our mask in place. Then if you have a piece of, of string or rubber band or like I have a piece of elastic, I didn't try it with elastic last time. This is kind of new for me. So we're going to see if I can thread it through. It might take me a second here. Um, and if, it, if I can't, I can always make the hole a little bit bigger, right? You can always make it a little bigger. Aha, there we go. And then this again, this might be a little tricky and it's a little hard to see because I used white, but you want to pull it out a little bit. And then if you can wrap it around your finger, can you see that? Okay. And I'm going to make a knot. Take your time, plenty of time, make a knot. I, I thought I knew how to make a knot, but I'm afraid not. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so making our knot here. There we go. I almost used, um, you know, twisting balloons. I have so many twisting balloons. I'm gonna cut this a little bit because I don't want it to look funny. But I have all these twisting balloons and I was like, oh, that could work, but then I had elastic. So pull, if you pull that gently, that knot 
should hold through the mask. And then you're gonna take it all the way around the other side and you wanna make sure, oh, I probably should have said this too. You wanna make sure that you measure it about the size of what your head would be so it's not too tight, yeah? And then you'll just bring it through to the other side. Yeah, so I'm gonna put it through the other side here. Uh, let's see if we can get it. We're so close. Um, I think one of the things that's, as you're doing this, I'll just say that's so fun about these masks is that you could start to come up with either a different Commedia character and maybe play with the size of the nose, maybe play with the eyebrows, or you could create your, come up with your own character, totally different from any of these stock characters, you know? Um, and then once you put on the mask, one of the things I really wanna see from you guys is, you know, how does your character walk, you know? How does your character talk? Um, you know, if your character is, more greedy, you know, maybe they talk a little deeper, maybe they walk a little bit lower to the ground, or if they're full of themselves and they're pompous, maybe they stand really tall. What are the different postures you can come up with um, using your mask as, as an idea, yeah? Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put it on over my big, my big hair buns. Let's see if we got it. And there we go. We got a Zani mask. What do you guys think? Do we like it? Uh-oh, it's joke o'clock. <laughs> Perfect timing. I mean, I feel like I'm already a joke, you guys. Oh my gosh, you're a walking, talking joke machine. I, oh I my gosh, let's check out these jokes, everyone. That is such a fun mask, I love it. You like right. it? I do, okay. This is a really good one. From Diego in Argentina, question, how can you tell if a singer is at your door? I don't know. How can you tell if a singer is at your door? They can't find the key and won't know when to come in. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, that oh must be a soprano. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> From Devin in New York, New York, why did the pianist keep banging his head against the keys? I don't know. Why did the pianist banging his head against the keys? He was playing by ear. Ah, that's a good one. These are so good, you guys. Good jokes. Are you guys coming up with these all by yourselves? Oh, my gosh. I think that a lot of them are. Maybe they had help from, like, very funny parents. Well, I think they're genius, and they need to start their own comedy show, and I want, it, I want tickets. That's what I've got to say about that. <laughs> oh, this is... Someone's, Megan says, me, a soprano, this is my life in one joke. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it, Megan. Uh, um, so, Dan, this, did this did, I feel like this was a really good crafting segment. I feel like everybody I, was able I, to make their mask. I absolutely think that was a good one. And I, I have to say, you know, you might have to go back and watch the video a second time, but I think you're going to come up with a very, very cool mask for Camper Showcase on Friday and possibly for the dance on Friday. Cause we're having a dance party. I keep trying to be Susan Blackwell, but I can't. There we go. Susan. Little thing. Uh, oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, thanks a lot. Aria says, thanks a lot. Stephanie, Dancing Cat says, thanks a lot. Kyron is laughing in a dramatic mezzo. Ah, nice. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see you guys' show and I wanna see, um, yeah, I wanna see what you come up with. I, if you post your masks on social media, will you, ta will you tag us? Will oh my gosh, what a great reminder, please do. And you know we love that. Um, there we are, at Met Opera Student, hashtag Met Opera Camp. Get into it. I keep saying that today, but it's because I'm so into week four of Met Opera Summer Camp. Steph, this was a wonderful lesson. And you know what I'm super excited about? What? Tell me. Not just the designs, but like they're going to take that and then they're going to decorate it their own way. And it's going to look yes. like a little bit like what you taught them, but also completely their own. And I'm really into it. Um, yes, yeah, so it doesn't have to stay a plain white paper plate. You can right. paint it. You could actually put... Um, other three-dimensional things, like if you wanted to play with cotton balls or just stuff that like sticks out, whatever you want, give it some Absolutely. hair. You know? Dr. Kamala says, we can't wait to see all your masks and your characters. I agree. Friends, okay, Steph, is that it? I think so. 
That was a great, great lesson. It was Aww. so fun. I love the mentee. I love now that I'm going to be watching cartoons and thinking like, is this Sani? Is this Il Datore? Is this Pantalone? Is this Colombina? I, I got to find out. Arlecchino. You know, SpongeBob is a really good one for that. There's a Ooh. lot of you'll see a lot of those characters in SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, Steph, can you hang with me while I do a few announcements? Absolutely. Woohoo! Announcements are my favorite. Okay, so tomorrow at noon, we are going to have story time with an opera singer. And friends, tomorrow's opera singer is sensational. Her name is Raven McMillan, and she is yet another winner, a, a soprano, a coloratura soprano, winner of the Mets National Council La Font competition, meaning that she basically won this prize, just like Emily Sierra and Duke Kim that we met. She won a prize uh, for being one of the, the best singers in, I believe in North America, in the United States and in North America. Uh, and, and she gets this like, you know, all those great opportunities from that. So she's gonna be with us tomorrow. We're gonna hear her sing. She's gonna read a story. We're gonna have a great time. She'll take your questions. Then after that, my friends, you know, when you're an adult, Steph, and you like have to go to work, and even if you work at the Metropolitan Opera, you know, where every day is kind of like a party, some days are tough, but you, you get to meet really cool people if you're lucky. And tomorrow for our Career Corner segment, we are going to meet one of the people that I work with um, who is makes every day like a party. His name is Tashambe Selby, and he is a Met Company singer. But get this, everyone. He followed his dream from the back of the house. He used to be an usher at the Metropolitan Opera. And he worked hard and he went to all of his auditions and went to his voice lessons. And Tashambe eventually found his way onto the stage of the Metropolitan Opera. It's a story of dedication. It's a story of um, just his tremendous spirit and the beauty of his talent and his love of this thing that we all love so much, we call it opera. So make sure, please, that you send me some of your questions for Tashambe because he's going to have some great answers for you because he is a first-rate singer. He's appeared on the Met stage at Carnegie Hall. He's singing everywhere. He's a teacher. He's a Met usher, so you know he's got some good stories about how people misbehave while they're seeing the opera. And he's just a wonderful human being. We're going to have a great time. So make sure you send me those questions for Tashambe. I think you're going to really enjoy meeting him. Um, friends, what else do we have? I think that's it. Oh, they're saying, thanks, silly Steph. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's so good to see you all. Oh, my gosh. I missed you. I'm really happy that I was able to come back this year. And I, I would love to spend more time with you guys at the Met Opera Camp. Well, I can't wait to have you back next summer. Or will we'll see you on Friday at the Camper Showcase? Uh, maybe. maybe. I actually, I might have an, I might have a clowning emergency. Oh, my gosh. I love a I'm clowning gonna, emergency. But I'm yeah, sure you'll I'll watch the showcase online and give us all oh, your notes. absolutely. We'll watch. And that's even more incentive for us to post our creations at Met Opera Student on Instagram, right? Yes. So that I can see it. Absolutely. Steph, it was great to see you. We love having you here. Friends, get ready, get set, go watch Rossini's Il Barbieri di Sevilla. You got about two and a half hours. Go get a snack. Get ready. You're going to love that opera. You can maybe finish your mask in time to watch with your mm -hmm. mask on. Awesome. Yeah. Steph, I'll see you soon, my friend. Thanks for being Have here with us. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.